Hi friends, my name is Joe and I'm part of the South Point team and I would like to just take a few moments to share my Jesus story with you. Now if you've come here expecting to hear a story that has a big lightning bolt moment and someone that fell to their knees, um, that's not my story. I'm sure you've heard had friends or you've heard of that, um, especially in the movies because the movies love to portray these bigger than life come to Jesus moments where people just fall out, roll in the floors and, and come to know Jesus. Well, my story is not like that. My story honestly is a story of being pursued. It's a story that has happened over my lifetime. Um, and to understand my story, we have to start at the beginning. I grew up going to church, so I really don't remember a time of not believing in God or believing in Jesus. Now I say believe in, because I probably didn't understand um, what it was to have a relationship with Jesus or what even Jesus really did for me growing up as I look back on all that. But my mom, she made sure we went to church. I got baptized as a baby and then I went to church, went to Sunday school all the way through the eighth grade, did Sunday school. So I was confirmed in the church um, that we were attending. And then something happened when, we, when I reached high school for us as a family, we just kind of stopped going to church. We drifted away from the church. Um, but it did give me a foundation. It gave me a foundation of God and of Jesus and probably helped to set some of my moral boundaries at that point in time that have served me pretty well. So I'm grateful for that. But it also left me with my own view of God, my own religion, if you will, of how God operated. Um, because during this time, somehow I picked up this concept that God was a God of checks and balances. I actually kind of remember just thinking, you remember those old scales you saw for the justice system with good and balancing? And um, it's kind of the way I viewed God. I always figured as long as my good check marks were a little bit more than the bad check marks, I was going to heaven. So that's how I lived my life. I was living it. Um, it was okay too if I'd let the bad ones get a little bit ahead of the good ones because I could always balance it out. You know, somewhere along the line I would balance it out. And I always had this um, thought in my head that somewhere in my life, and it was always the midpoint, and, and I hadn't made up the number, I, somewhere around 40 because I was only going to live to be about 80, um, that I would, I would go back to, to church um, and I would start making sure that my good check marks were more than my bad check marks so I could go to heaven. Um, and that's how I lived my life. And it was a good life, it really was. I mean, it allowed me to live my life the way I wanted to live it. Um, it allowed me to have some fun and not um, really worry about how I represented myself as far as being a Christian, because I really probably wasn't a Christian at the time. But I did believe in God. But like I said, I believed in this God that was a God of check marks and it just, I just kept kind of mental track all the time. Oh, that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. And did my check marks um, balance out? And that was all. That was my end game to make sure that the bad check marks didn't get so far ahead of the good check marks that I couldn't eventually come back around and balance them out. Um, this plan was awesome, awesome for me because it allowed me to live the life I wanted to live. Um, it allowed me to go out and party. It allowed me to. Um, worry about only myself, you know, it it just allowed me to do things the way I would want to do them. Um, the good thing about this is that I was brought up in the church, so I did have somewhat of a moral compass, so I, my bad didn't get so bad that I got in so much serious trouble that I could not recover from it, so I'm very fortunate and grateful for that. But I do know I did get into some trouble from partying and stuff like that, and I do believe, looking back, that was probably God's way of trying to put me back on the path towards Him. But I wouldn't listen. I didn't need to listen to Him because I had a plan. My plan was, midway through my life, somewhere around 40, I was going to go back to church and I was going to make sure that my good check marks outweighed the bad check marks. And that's pretty much how I led my life. And then, I think God had other plans, as we, as He always does. He kind of sits back and lets us do things our way, I think, sometimes. And then He, he steps in and gives us direction. And that's what really happened. Um, 
I can see some turning points in my life as I look back. And I'm not one to look back on life. Um, I, I just don't find a lot of value, but I do find value in looking back and seeing where God's been faithful and where God has um, pointed me and directed me. So the first, first instance I know that um, God probably stepped in and, and did something in my life that started to change the trajectory of my life was he gave me a wonderful niece, Michaela. I mean, he put her in my life and that, that has changed my life and, and it started me on a path of discovering who God was and, and building a relationship with Jesus. And the reason that happened was really because of my sister at the point. Um, as Michaela was growing up, um, we weren't going to church um, at first. Um, we didn't understand church when she was real small, being a baby. But as she was getting to be, I don't know, three, four years old, um, my sister really thought it was time that we put her into a church environment so she could grow up. Um, around other people knowing God and Jesus and learning about God and Jesus for herself. So we went on this church hunt at that point in time. And we attended one church and I probably would have stayed there at that point. Um, it, cause I, it was all right for me. But there again, my sister said, it just was not the right fit for her. And she didn't feel like it was the right fit for Michaela. So a friend had heard of this church called South Point, And so we decided to give it a shot. And so we ended up at South Point. Um, and it really, it was, like I said, it was because of Michaela and my sister that I ended up going to South Point. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect when I went to South Point. I didn't know um, if I was gonna like it. And, and honestly, at first it was kind of like, I'm not sure about this place called South Point. Those people are way too friendly. Um, they have a funny man up on stage that, I don't know, just, he was way too exuberant for my taste at first and so I didn't I wasn't really comfortable at South Point at first um and and the music have you heard the music they play at South Point I mean that is not the hymns I grew up with it they never once played the old rugged cross for me so it did take me some time to get comfortable at, at South Point and there again I think that's where God had stepped in because for some reason my sister was comfortable there so I was going with them as a family unit. So I still, I went to South Point. I came every Sunday and we started going every Sunday to South Point. And then um, along this time, I still really didn't have a relationship with God at that time. Um, I think, you know, prior to coming to South Point, the way I lived my life, and we talked about this a little bit ago about, um, I just lived it for me. But I also um, developed this strategy of picking like three people that were important to me, um, were somewhat mentors. They probably had some leadership um, over me um, or they were good friends. But it was, I, I do remember I, I had like three people and I felt like these people were a three-legged stool. And as long as they were okay and balanced and treated me well and kind of did things my way then my life was was good it was nothing wrong with it and then um, but as people do they disappoint you or they don't live up to your expectations um, and the minute that started to happen then my life kind of got topsy-turvy and you know and I was in this turmoil because so-and-so didn't live up to my expectations or so-and-so did this or so-and-so did that you know and, and I couldn't understand why they would do that but it would affect me. So that was part of the way I lived my life during this period of um, my checks and balances part of my life. I just, I had this three-legged stool. And then eventually I did away with the three-legged stool because I, you can only take so much disappointment of people letting you down. And then I just figured, okay, well, I can't depend on those three people, so I'll just live it for myself. I'll, I'll be my own. Um, stool if you will and I'll do it my way so that's kind of as we came into South Point that's where I was I was still had this God of checks and balances and I was just living my life for myself and I was working out of town so it was real convenient I could um, come home for the weekend go to church and then go back and 
kind of live this life out of town of um yeah we did some partying after work and stuff like that um probably wasn't the best example of christian living at that point in time in my life and um but that's how it went and that probably went i guess around two years as we we came into south point there um but at that point I think I felt this urge and, and that I needed to do something for Michaela. I needed to do more because I didn't know what was going on back in um, back in the children's church area. I just felt like, what are they learning? I, and I just didn't understand what they were learning back there. And, and, and Michaela was no help. You know, a four-year-old, you ask her, oh, what did you do today? Oh, well, what did you learn? Oh, you know, we had goldfish. And those were kind of answers I was getting from Michaela as she would come out of church. And I'm like, I don't, I just don't know what's going on back there. So I know that was God just putting these question marks in my mind about what's going on. But at the same time, he was, he was kind of working with me and saying, hey, you can't make questions or complaints or even changes if you're on the outside. So that's when I started volunteering back in elementary um, and helping out because I really was trying to figure out what was going on. And I also had this desire that um, Michaela and the kids back there didn't just see women of the church leading. I, wanted, I did have a desire that kids should see that men also believed in Jesus and men also could teach them about Jesus. I think part of that comes from my own upbringing because my dad did not go to church with us. We didn't discuss religion or God with my dad. Um, I believe he believed, but we just didn't discuss it. It just wasn't something. So my whole Sunday school experience was the, what I considered the old ladies. And now looking back on it, they probably were my age at the time, but they were old for this, you know, first and second grader going to back there. But it was always the ladies of the church that taught Sunday school. And I just didn't want Michaela growing up with that type of worldview, or even the other kids, because I think it was just important for me to see that they had a balanced view of who could believe in Jesus. So that got me volunteering back in, in children's. Um, so that's like the two things I, knew, I can point back to at this point in time that God did for me. Um, he gave me Michaela, and then he put this desire on me to um, figure out what was going on in children's and, and, and this desire to volunteer back there. And, and looking back on that, that helped me grow in faith because every Sunday that I volunteered, I was learning something I didn't know in the Bible. And as the kids were learning it, I was learning it. And, and it also gave me the opportunity to be around um, people that were further along in their faith journey than I was. And these people, you could see the difference in them. They had this aura or spirit or just the way they carried themselves was different. And it kind of made me want some of that. It wanted me to know how they lived their life like that because they didn't seem to get upset. They kind of went with the flow. Um, you know, they were a lot more positive in life than I was. So. I just wanted to be more like that. So it kept me coming back for more and more. Um, at this time, I was working out of town still. I was up the road. Um, so here's where part three probably of God coming in and, and, and to redirecting my life. At that point in time, um, I was working for a um, contractor and we lost the contract. And at the time we lost the contract, the company that won the contract couldn't pick up um, personnel from the losing company. It was just one of those contract things and the companies didn't get along at that point in time. So they, they were not going to bridge that gap and allow the losing employees to go over to the winning company. And it just didn't look like there was any end in sight. And at that time, I had some options. Um, I could wait it out and see if they changed their mind and keep working where I was working up the road. I could have, um, taking a job somewhere else, um, further away, you know, where I would fly in and fly out um, every week, or I could come back home and work. 
um, closer to home. And during this time, I mean, I just felt being pulled to come back to St. Mary's County and, and find a job near, the, near, near my house, um, working back in the county, doing something closer. And I actually sat down and, because um, I wanted to make the right decision, so I sat down and, and wrote a list of pros and cons and at that point in time, and I just felt like I was being directed um, to come back and make a difference in my own community, to volunteer more, um, to serve more at church. And if I was to take a job outside of the county, um, that wouldn't have been possible. So I really feel like that was God just putting these um, desires on my heart to come back and do something in the county. So that's what I did. I, I eventually took a job back here in St. Mary's County, um, long before I probably needed to, but I just, I knew when I made the decision, it was the right decision to come back to the county. And it, and it has been a good decision for me. It has allowed me to grow in my faith. Um, it allowed me to volunteer more at South Point. Um, it eventually allowed, um, not allowed, but it led me to um, recommit my life to Jesus um, by being rebaptized um, November 9th, um, 2014. My sister, Michaela, and I um, all um, were baptized at South Point, um, reconfirming our lives to Jesus. So, I mean, that's, that's my story. Um, and that's where I've grown, is coming to South Point faithfully and giving and being part of the South Point community. Um, as I wrap this story up, I was asked to share a couple of um, life verses that I that are kind of my go-to. And no, I'm not going to share um, any about faith and works. Um, but I did give up my um, checkbook balancing or checkmark balancing um, lifestyle. I no longer believe um, that that my God is a God that keeps these check marks and that as long as I have enough good check marks I'll get to heaven. I, I firmly believe in John 316 um, and, and live my life according to John 316 and not not the life that Joe was living before believing in this whole check mark mentality. Um, but if I was to come up with besides a faith and works Bible verses, there's probably three Bible verses that at any one time I, I lean back on. And the first one is um, Genesis 127 and that's where um, the Bible tells us that we're all made in the image of God. I just feel like that's such an important one that when we deal with other people and, and, and we're all busted and broken, but as we deal with them, we have to remember that even though they're getting on my nerves, and trust me, I have to remember this a lot some days, um, that they, they too are made in the image of God. And so I should treat them as that and treat them with respect. So I, I lean heavily on Genesis 127. The other one is John 10, 10, where it tells us the thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. Um, but I have come that you may have life and have life to the full. Um, that one to me, just it just helps me to keep things in perspective and in balance and to remember that um, to shut off sometimes those negative thoughts running through my brain or um, not let some other negative thing affect me, um, that all good things come from God, and that I just remember that Jesus came so that we can have the best life possible, and that anything less than that may or may not be from Jesus. That, you know, we have to remember that there are good and evil forces out there, and that thief did come to destroy and kill. And then next one is um, Matthew 6, 34. Um, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I truly try to live my life like that, not worrying about the future. Um, doesn't mean I don't plan for the future, but I don't sit here and worry um, day in and day out. And, and trust me, in my family, that's hard um, because my mother, especially, doesn't live her life that way. She loves to worry. Um, if I tell her I have a, a little sniffle, she's going to worry for three weeks that I'm catching a major cold or something. But I, I truly try to live my life according to Matthew 6, 34 and, and not worry about tomorrow, but to live my life today and plan for tomorrow. So friends, I'm so thankful that you stayed with me and you heard my story. I hope you got something out of it. 
Um, and I hope we're able to get together soon and be in, meet each other and see each other at the church. But until then, remember, you matter deeply to God. God bless.